See, I think this was one of your comparison picks on your Instagram here that you have. Oh yeah, that was um, which that's when I won national, the Canadian nationals, whatever year. That this was. one in your sequence, I think this was part of your four shows that you were doing in a row. That was the Toronto Pro, yeah. Oh, this was. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. I saw that backing before. Okay, cool. <clears throat> yeah, were there any differences you noticed from? in the process there from like the first couple shows in the string and of things, or was it kind of pretty similar you feel or um, the Arizona pro? That was, yeah, that was Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. That was too hard at that show. Yeah. Th well, I don't know. It's hard to say. It's uh, it's so it hard. It's so hard with this episode is brought to you by first attachment. First Attachment is an expert formulated supplement company founded by renowned coach Justin Harris. We've combined science with real world experience in each product. We are battle tested. Are you? Find your battle today at firstattachment.com. All right. Hey, YouTube. Uh, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Uh, we got another special guest, Ms. Rachel Killam, coming on here, IFBB Pro, uh, making things happen in the supplement world as well. Um, so we're really excited to have you on. So thanks so much for joining us. And as always, my co-host, Justin Harris as well. So pleasure, pleasure to meet everybody and connect. So, uh, you know, we were talking a little bit before we got the recording going here about, uh, you know, how you got started and competing and, and how long you were working at, obviously you've been a, been a high level competitor for some time, but you know, one of the things I think that is really interesting for our audience to hear a little bit about is just what motivated you to get started and and kind of walk us through your journey a little bit. Yeah, so first off, thanks for having me, guys. It's nice to get some FaceTime here. Uh, Justin's been my coach for a couple of years. Uh, yeah, where do I begin? Um, I've been competing now for 12 years. Took me almost 10 years to go pro. Well, eight, eight to nine years to go pro on the Canadian circuit here. Uh, what got me started, I've just been training since high school, I just saw girls one day kind of posing at the gym and I'm like, I want to try that. Like I had no idea what I was getting into and it just kind of took off from there and I never really, never really stopped. <laughs> uh, did, you, uh, it, did you want to like start, did you want to compete right from the get go or were you, did you just, you know, want to start working out or did you, was it with the intention of competing almost right from the beginning? Um, I think because I'm pretty goal oriented, like I was training and I'm like, okay, well, why am I training? It's obviously for health and it was an outlet for me, but I always wanted that like next level. I'm pretty competitive. Right. So, um, seeing those girls posing, I'm like, I want to try that. And then, yeah, I just did my first show, had no idea what I was doing. Someone kind of coaching me on the side and it just took off from there. But, uh, yeah, I always, I I'm competitive. So. I think, I think you, you said a key word. I noticed like across the board, you said training people who people who aren't that way, call it working out. And that you'll notice that the people who are really motivated and always had intentions of doing something and are really goal oriented, they always call it training. It's so much so that I, uh, uh, a buddy of mine, Brad, because I, I, I'm not competing anymore. And so I struggle with motivation sometimes for, for working out, you know, and that's even, yeah. kind of, he summed it up like that. He's like, well, now you're working out. You used to train. <laughs> like that's that's true. Yeah, that's a good distinction. I never actually thought about that. It's good, good one. Good catch. <laughs> well, and speaking with it, I mean, I just think one thing that it's easy to glaze over is, you know, how long, you know, you just really, you know, work through that. I mean, you said you said as little shy of about 10 years. I mean, obviously, you know, you you stuck through it. it was there anything or a time during that that uh process where you felt like kind of that self check, like, is this really for me? Or did you have any doubts around that time frame? Just interested to hear about, about maybe the mindset throughout that period. It's funny because I would remember, especially when I first was getting started as an, as an amateur, listening to people talk about preps and how they just wanted it to be over. And even as a pro now, like um, in 2021, when I did a bunch of shows with Justin, there were pros backstage that were just like, okay, I'm just ready. This is my last show this season. I'm ready for it to be over. I typically like would never think that way. It was, um, I just really enjoyed the process. Like they always say, learn to love the process. And there was something about the, the grit aspect of it, like really just kind of digging in and getting it done. Just, I don't know. I just always enjoyed, enjoyed the suffer 
Sure. So, yeah. Too. There, that, there, that, 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 that string of shows in 2021 was rough. Yeah. You, you definitely <laughs> suffered. Four that. shows. That was a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you had your, your best uh, finish, what, top five at the Toronto Pro in 2021. Is that? Yeah. That was the last show of the season in December. We just kind of like rolled through them. It started with the plan to do one or well two probably. And then, then there was a third and then there was a fourth and I typically respond while doing more shows and I just get better back to back. So that, uh, that was a highlight to finish the season off on for sure. But yeah, Yeah. I I typically wouldn't ever want prep to be over so badly or think about like, is this for me? Like when I was an amateur, um, there were times where I thought, can I make this happen? Cause the the goal was always to go pro. It just took me so long, especially because Canada used to have a different tier system that you had to work your way up the levels. And they gave out like three pro cards a year in one category. So it was like brutal for a while there. Yeah. In America, (laughs) we give out more, more cards in one and at the nationals than you guys do in an entire year. I think we give out more at North Americans than you guys do in an entire year also. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's better now because we do have, now we have two, well, three pro shows, but before we only just ever had the Toronto pro, but then they came out with the Vancouver pro am a couple of years ago. And that's when they switched up the, the tier system. So it wasn't like three levels and all that. So that, that was the year that I got my pro card and I think that was 2019. Was there a time in that process too, that as an amateur, you felt like you started to really make a jump and then if so, like when was that, or would you say it was a steady progressive, you know, <laughs> it was up and down because yeah. that's a long time frame, right? So I would shoot up like I won overall at provincials, which bought me a, a lifetime buy to nationals. So I never had to go back down. But I have ups and downs. I showed up to nationals after that at a point that I didn't think I looked that great, you know. And then I went to the Arnold Amateur and I, I won the Arnold Amateur. Yeah. Uh, and there was a point after that where I went back to the Arnold Amateur. Did it look good? So it was just like up and down, up and down. It's like they say, success is in a straight line. Like mm-hmm. I had to go through a lot of uh, failures and a lot of self-defeating moments to just pick myself back up again and keep going. I think it's important, you know, uh, important to highlight point that because a lot of people in any sport, right? Uh, I would imagine in competing, they kind of maybe dwell too much on, well, I was flat or, well, we – we got a little washed out or we had this or well, my, this or that isn't big enough or round enough, whatever the thing is. Right. But instead it's just, all right, well, it happened. What do I learn from it? Let me try it again. And then maybe two or three shows later it happened again. You're like, oops, well, (laughs) but you know, you're just getting right back on it and it's time to get to work, you know? So I think just, you know, it says a lot about your grit and determination. So uh, hats off to you for just kind of, you know, pushing and grinding through that. So that's awesome. Yeah, thanks. Like they say, every show is a learning experience, right? So <laughs> every single show. <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah. You're, you have a tough physique too. You're real stubborn, uh, very stubborn physique. Is it my sound on all the way? It just <laughs> you're. I was. You're like a quantum tunneling client, and what I what I mean by that is a what uh, <laughs> quantum tunneling. This is a stupid. This is a stupid oh, okay. sidetrack. But, uh, so the the sun powers by nuclear fusion. You know. But it, it, do, it doesn't actually have enough heat, enough energy to create fusion. Fusion means like the, the, part, the particles penetrate each other's nucleus. But there's a potential pushing them away, like a magnet that pushes them away. But there's something called t- quantum tunneling, which means quantum particles, which all particles are, can, a, can, can technically be anywhere in the universe. You never know re- really where they are. And so like you could, if you banged your head against a wall enough times, eventually you would just be on the other side of the wall. That's what your preps are always like. <laughs> we would just be That's killing. exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah it bottom tunneling. You heard it here. Killing you, and then I'd be like <laughs> racking my brain and stressing out, and then you'd send one check in, and it was like boom, you you tunneled through the wall, and it was like okay, we're gonna make it. Well, you got you got carb cycling, intra workout high molecular carbohydrate rate is kind of you. You kind of were one of the founders of that in the early two thousands. Now. You heard it live here, 2023, it's quantum tunneling. So if anyone's saying that in 2040, they're like, yeah, you know, I do the quantum tunneling training for my prep. Quantum tunneling, you heard that's it, You heard it first here. You it's know, catchphrases work. I, we, should, we should market that because people don't yeah, care. That's a hashtag for sure. Yeah. 
I'm gonna wait to post this video until we have it yeah. uh, yeah, trademarked. trademarked. <laughs> like, right, so gonna... Sometimes there was so much tunneling that like you come out with like two black eyes and I'm yeah. broken. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I would say. Yeah, like ideally you you like you have you start prepping, you have this like vision in your mind of like you know, like racing through the finish line, all glorious, but it's not. By the time you get to the show, you're like limping, dragging a leg, one <laughs> arm's broken, and you're just trying to get across the finish line. We well, yeah, actually, I was going to pull this up really quick, too, just to hopefully it's the right one. Let me see here. Yeah, this is it. See, so, yeah, I think this was one of your comparison picks on your Instagram here that you have. Oh, yeah, that was um... – which that's when I won national, the Canadian nationals, whatever year that was, I can't see the text. Um, and then the middle or the right side was the Arizona pro with Justin in 2021. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Any key differences you felt in this time frame that, you know, you focused on more of or less of, or whatever the case is. The bangs. <laughs> <laughs> Are bangs coming back in? No, they are not. Please oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to tell my daughter. My, <laughs> my, my, my kid does things now. I, I think it was knows, overall so. just better conditioning, just building up all the areas that you need to overall. I wouldn't say I made strides in any one particular area. That was years ago, right? So I yeah. I think it was just bringing overall bringing everything up and just a tighter package. That was um, like 2021. I had my best conditioning that year for sure. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you look awesome. good there. When yeah. you're on, you look really good. You're just really good structure. You're, you're that like three quarter pose there is always my favorite. You're really good shape for that. Wide shoulders. Your waist looks really tiny in that pose. And that was um after we came out of the first show, which was um Chicago Pro when they had it in Atlanta. And that oh, week yeah. were too flat. And so we kind of pulled back yeah. on cardio and increased the carbs and all that and made some good changes in between. I think that was maybe like two weeks in between those two shows. Yeah. yeah I think Justin, you, you were mentioning too, that Rachel's had some pretty short windows that you guys have done. If I remember correctly, we're like dieting pretty hard, pretty fast for a show or you guys recall any uh, fun stories with that? Yeah. That's kind of the quantum tunneling. I don't know that it was so much like short. It was that week after week we're like, man, okay, so we're, we're, we're doing all the right things, you know? And then, I'd be racking my brain and thinking like, okay, next week I'm going to have to tell her we're going to have to pick another show. And then she'd send her check in and she'd look basically show ready. It was like, <laughs> bang, out of nowhere. Well, yeah. there was like, a, I guess like the, the time frame in between shows when we do multiple shows back to back. So I generally like to do a couple, but there, I think I've maybe done it once or twice with you, Justin, where we'd literally have, they'd be weekends apart. Yeah. So I'm like stressing out because the water's back on and then you just you really just have to like trust and i do trust justin with everything i'll do whatever he tells me to do and i won't complain about it but um <laughs> it, you like especially with the water in between shows like that you just kind of have to just take a deep breath and just go with it because it'll just work out in the end as long as you do what he tells you to do <laughs> yeah you yeah, always get stronger the, as the shows went on i've always felt like i mean i think your place yeah. showed that too but where was this one in your uh this one in your sequence. I think this is part of your four shows that you were doing in a row. That was a Toronto pro. Yeah. Oh, this was, Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. I saw that backing before. Okay, cool. <clears throat> yeah. Were there any differences you noticed from in the process there from like the first couple shows in the string and of things, or was it kind of pretty similar you feel? Or? Um, I mean, 2021 overall was probably my, I would say out of all my years competing, my favorite and, and most, personally successful year competing because I, I honestly didn't find it that hard. Like, even though we had a couple shows that were spread out a little bit, my body just responded really well. And I think that's the year that I was eating the most food. I was doing the least amount of cardio. And like thinking back, I think it's because I took such, well, not such a long time off, but that was the COVID years in between. Mm. So COVID forced me to take time off uh, mentally and physically. And I think actually having that break, which Besides that, like I couldn't tell you the last time I took a full actual year off in between preps. So I think that really helped uh, kind of rein it in and, and make things a lot easier for me in 2021. Got it. Yeah. And here was the, the last one. I think we we're, let me pull this up here because this is the Arizona one, the Arizona Pro. That was, yeah, that was Arizona. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, that, the, the, you were too hard top. at that show. Yeah, th- well, I don't know. It's hard to say. It's uh, it's so it was hard. A lineup. It's so hard with your division. It's uh, I, I mean, you know, most of our audience is guys who compete in bodybuilding or even classic. Where it's just pretty straightforward. Like men's bodybuilding, get the most shredded and carry the most muscle. It's I mean, it's not easy, but it's simple. You guys, like, it's it's like so hard. You got to try to you know, guess what the judges are looking for. And then, and it changes show to show. Cause if some girl, you know, the, the, the there might be three shows in a row where it looks like they're really war- rewarding dryness and conditioning. Yeah. And then, and then some girl comes in and just happens to look really good while full that show. And it's like, they just change the judging criteria all, all at once. Cause I loved that look. I yeah. thought that was, I yeah. thought that, that was like, is my favorite. I thought you were spot on for that show. Yeah, I was really proud of that physique, and it's comparative too, right? You got to look at who's in the lineup, and if there's a couple girls that are just different shape, more muscle, or bringing the same sort of conditioning, one way or the other, um, they're going to judge against that. But um, I think that was we're getting closer to the Olympia cutoff date, so obviously the yeah. lineups start getting more competitive, and more girls are attending. Yeah, I can remember that now. Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, that was a pretty stacked show. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, you were, you were talking to us a little bit beforehand, um, you know, being active, you know, as an athlete, I know we want, we were kind of discussing a little bit about, you know, and I think it's interesting for others to hear there. Cause now you went from, you know, I, I want you, if you could share with everybody about like, you know, you're in a different field went to school for something else. Now you're in the field that y- you love, that's kind of closer to your competitive, um, uh, aspirations, you know, and you also, it sounds like, you know, from talking to you before, really just aggressive to make that happen yourself. Not only were you climbing the ranks and competing, but also just reaching out, being active. Can you kind of walk through, you know, a little bit of uh, your original schooling and, and what you're doing to what you're doing today and what that process looked like for everybody out there? Yeah. So before I even started competing in the the industry that I'd always seen myself in was a veterinary industry. I was actually, I went to school to become a veterinary assistant and did that for a couple of years. And then I went back to school to become a vet, veterinary technician. And that, when I was in that program was when uh, I started to do my first show. And I was what, uh, I guess I was 20 years old. So I did my first show and I was like, oh, I want to be sponsored. So I reached out to some local companies and I ended up getting sponsorship with one of them here in Vancouver. And then they, they had a need back then to fill the gap of, you know, someone to monitor and manage their social media and kind of build up an athlete program because they didn't really have anything at the time so they, they gave me a phone part or sorry a cell phone and I was working for them part-time and I was like oh this is fun like they're paying me to do this I get a phone and I get to connect with people which I love doing uh in an industry that I'm I'm liking so far uh and then they eventually asked me to come on full-time as soon as I graduated from that that tech program so that's kind of where my start in the the fitness industry or supplement industry rather Nice. I think that's yeah. really important because so many people, I think in the sport, think it's just going to get handed to you, you know, and it used to kind of be that way when the weeders owned the magazines, it was, you know, win whatever show they cared about and, you know, they'd give you a sponsorship, but it's not that way anymore. And people complain about there not being any money in the sport or my stupid camera or whatever, <laughs> but it's, it's, you, you know, you have to take some initiative and people just, people don't. And people, you know, like you look, go out and like reach out to the companies, talk to them, you yeah. know, it's, and people just don't. And it always drives me crazy because people put all this work at all this work and self-motivation and have this great work ethic to compete because nothing's as hard as a contest prep. If you can step on stage in shape, you can do anything, but then they don't let that carry over to the rest of their life, especially, yeah. you know, like, you have so many people working jobs and stuff that they, that they don't enjoy at all and, and not, not trying to push it in the industry that they do love. For sure. And that was like something I'd always talk to people about because I was the person that for that first company that people would reach out to for sponsorship. Most companies don't care if you step on stage like that's mm-hmm. and it, they'll they'll reach out with like, here's what I did and this is what I would like from you. And it's like you got to treat it as a as a job application. Like, what can you do for the company? Why are you marketable? Like, what what's your your value? <laughs> like, you're not coming to me with a value proposition. Like, why do I care? Like, I don't. But like, if it's just to get on stage and compete, unless you're doing the Olympia or you have a huge following, it's really of no service to the company. Exactly. You're just kind of yeah. Be- tired at that point. <laughs> yeah, people don't get that. It's like, you know, you have person A has, I don't know, 
140,000 followers with really high engagement, uh, you know, great conversions, all this data to show the conversion and sales on their Instagram page or whatever versus person B who won the Midwest Classic, you know? And it's like, you know, no one knows who won the Midwest Classic last year or the year before or that the show even exists. I mean, nothing against compete, you know, like everyone has to start at those, those, you know, those local shows and stuff, but a company, if they, they have to, I mean, they, they have to make money. And so whatever you, whatever they're paying you, you have to provide more, more. value that than they're 100%, paying you or, yeah. or they lose money on you. I, yeah. It's thing. surprising how people don't understand that concept. I just, it kind of blows my mind a little bit. Yeah. I'm sure you with, with first attachment, you guys are getting applications left, right and center too. Yeah. Like it's a little mind boggling. <laughs> oh yeah, people wanting, wanting to be sponsored. They're going to do, you know, the local novice show and they want... <laughs> All, all their training and supplements sponsored and they haven't competed yet or won anything or, and they don't, they're not going to, they don't, they've got three posts on Instagram in the last eight years. <laughs> yeah. I think it's really just, you know, and I, I try to spend some time on uh, education and our, our, we have a team that kind of helps us with that as well. Just like really educate them. Cause you don't know who's going to be that next one that really does pop, but it's like, you know, uh, trying to give them resources to help them grow their personal brand is also is ultimately going to help first attachment grow, but they have to have that buy-in to where they're, yeah. they're, re they're realistic. And then it's like, it all is just, again, what is your value to the marketplace? Like we can pay you nothing or we can pay you $10,000 a month. Like it just, if you bring in X amount per month, then you can get, you can get paid that. But if you don't, you know, and I know everything's not going to be direct. There is some just, you know, uh, NIL as we call it, like, you know, name image likeness factor, but it's a lot less valuable today than it was back 15, 20 years ago. Like, uh, you know, one of the, there's guys out there and I think he has competed in something. I, I don't know, but like a Larry wheels or whatever, right? Like, you know, he's going to bring in more to a company than say the person who won the Arnold, maybe, maybe that's a little extreme, but I think it'd be pretty Probably dang close. Will. He probably he will. will probably yeah. will because that's because you know 15 20 years ago when the magazines were out the supplement companies decided who who was known who decided who sold supplements basically yeah. you know now they don't now yeah. the people decide it's up to that was you know, TikTok. yeah yeah <laughs> oh yeah i think three of my kids are doing a TikTok dance outside the door right now oh fun yeah, i'm no, supposed I, to be I, joining them but i know an influencer about 10 or 12 years ago he started he just was really passionate about a certain topic and is a multi-millionaire now and was as normal as can be barely changed he still barely changes his content he doesn't have anything fancy no fancy setup but just he grinded and grinded and yeah. grinded and everyone thinks he's an overnight success like he's been on joe rogan a few times and nice. he, that was that was after you know 10 years of really really good quality content that he was passionate about 12 hours a day pumping it out pumping it out pumping it out and then built his own you know, personal brand out there and then got these other invites. And, you know, now, now is, you know, everyone knows that knows them, but, uh, uh, th th you know, so I just think people just to understand that. And I think that's one of the things we try to focus on with our athletes too, is we have a marketing team that will partner up with them to help them grow. And, that's good. That's you know, good. maybe they're not going to ever be at, you know, a million followers, but you know, Hey, we can help them a little bit. And if they're a coach, have them come on here and talk about their coaching or whatever we can do to help, yeah. um, you know, I know with our, some of our military background too, like any of the trainers out there, we have a couple scheduled that are, you know, retired uh, from the military and they're trying to start their business. They're not big known. They're not going to, you know, blow up our, uh, our followers or subscribers. Cause it's like, you know, some massive name, but it, it, you know, it's still cool to talk to them and then give them a platform maybe that they can share and say, Hey, I was on this podcast and here's what I'm all about or whatever the case is. So whatever we can do to help grow them as well. It's kind of a, a fun uh, experience as well. Yeah. Well, if you have the means to be of service, like I think you should as a, especially as a brand too, it's just, you're just putting that, that good energy out there. You never know when it's going to come back, come back to you guys. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And is that, would you say that's something like in your role right now as a sales manager in the supplement industry, like what, what are you most passionate about? Like what, what part of your job do you enjoy the most? We, we won't show us your employer. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> no, I love, I love connecting with people and I love building uh, relationships and, we, I have so many good partnerships with so many of our, our retailers and distributors. And it's, uh, it, that's what lights me up is connecting with people and, and building really solid relationships. And for example, when I was at the Arnold's um, last weekend, I got to meet a couple that I hadn't actually met in person before. So that's always super cool getting some actual FaceTime and yeah, it's just 
the connection. It's yeah. It's all relationships, right? Yeah. We were talking before you got to run into uh, Danny, right? Cause you, you two. Yeah. Kinda, yeah. Kind of by chance. Was that a leader at the show at, at the expo? That was or? at the expo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I had my head head down looking at my phone and she's like, Hey, and I was like, Oh, <laughs> Oh, she's like four feet tall. <laughs> Took a photo together, chatted for a little bit. Uh, I wish I could have like got a train in with her or something, but uh, it was nice to actually meet her in person. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I had the same experience. We were down in Texas and met with David and Danny. And uh, first thing I said, when I walk up, like, you're really tall. I'm like, that's what Justin <laughs> Justin told me that when we, when we didn't see each other in person for a little over 10 years because of where we lived. He's like, I forgot how tall you are. I'm like, thanks. Just <laughs> remind me. In the, I'm about 6'3". So oh, okay. In the bodybuilding yeah. world, I'm like seven feet tall. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I, I'm 5'7", and all, all of the guys are like, oh, you're a lot taller than I thought. I'm like, yeah, it's just the big old yeah, Canadian ass over here. <laughs> Uh, when you, that's such a weird thing when you first meet all the bodybuilders, you know, I mean, it, it's yeah. not as much now, but like when you only, I mean, I guess you still see them only on screen, you know, but you saw them in the magazines and then you meet them in person and it's like, wow, that's, cause it's there, not a tall man sport. I mean, it's just yeah. not. There was a few at the Arnold's where I was like, like you just said, I, I was like, man, that's a massive human being. And they still were big. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But when, when I walked by him, I was just like, whoa. <laughs> like, they're built, well, they're built wrong. It's like they're, they're wide and they are tall. It's yeah. like you built sideways. <laughs> that's yeah. No, it's, it's interesting. Well, what, what else, uh, what else do you have going on? Have you ever, have you, you know, any, any other, uh, you know, shows in the horizon coming on now or any, any things, uh, outside of the uh the management uh, role right now that you have in the works um yeah i mean as far as shows go i don't really have anything planned yet i told myself i should take the year off uh like i went pretty hard the last two years like 2021 i did four shows and then last year i just did one but it just uh i think just the grind after 2021 kind of got to me a little bit and it um didn't have or i don't have as much of the drive right now to to step on stage this year I say that, but like, we'll see if I get to the close to the end of the year, I might get bit with the, with the bug to compete again, but I just needed a bit of a, a, a mindset shift. So I actually started CrossFit oh, <laughs> in January. Yeah. So I'm doing that a few times a week. It's like a different, different challenge, right? Definitely a different, um, shift. Uh, and I'm, it's very humbling. <laughs> There's a lot of moves that I, it's like a different kind of strong. So I'm enjoying yeah. that that new community and, and new lifts and different moves that I'm like, I suck at this. So it's super humbling. <laughs> yeah. So I was going to ask is how, how did you, you know, transition to that? Cause I know it's, I'm sure you're more used to like the focus on the muscles where now it's all about the movement quality. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm doing it a couple times a week, so I'm still bodybuilding. <laughs> I'm, I don't know if I would give that up completely at any point, but um, it's nice to kind of throw that in a couple times a week, especially even just doing like a, a CrossFit conditioning class or you're like, yeah dying on the floor afterwards yeah. it's a great way to stay in shape in the off season too and um no it's definitely it's been interesting like the gymnastics portion of it learning that it's been pretty cool yeah i will say some of like the overhead squats and the cleans and all that as long as i kept it i kept it light enough it was really good for just mobility stretching yeah. like using all those little you know getting getting lower and things like that. If I ever tried to like push it too much, I would try to muscle it. It was not a good, not a good outcome. So yeah, I mean, CrossFit has such a bad rep, but it's, it's funny now that I'm actually doing it. And when I tell people in the bodybuilding world, they're like, Oh, like really? And I'm like not getting the response I thought I would for the most part, but it's, it's, it's interesting to be on the other side of things. But I think as long as you're, you know, practicing good form and not being an idiot about it and not training somewhere that doesn't uh, enforce good form and habits, um, then it's fine. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, that's t typical in the bodybuilders to just talk about how unhealthy or dangerous that sport is. <laughs> well, we <laughs> right. step on dehydrated and step starved and, you know, but, uh, I think CrossFit's interesting cause it's, uh, it, it's, it seems like it's super tight knit, you know, like it's, I've never done CrossFit, uh, but what we're doing, a, we have a booth at a, at a CrossFit gym opening actually. In, in, in oh, nice. Weeks. But you just like, and one, and the guy who owns the gym there used to be a bodybuilder that I used to lift with and he's full on CrossFit now. He's in great shape, but Hey, I don't think you can, you can discredit the training because those people are in shape. You ever watch the CrossFit games, they're animals. Yeah. And then <laughs> B, the people who do it really seem to love it. You know, you don't, you definitely don't get that like familial 
spirit in, in bodybuilding. I mean, everyone like has friends at the gym, you know, and your buddies are at the gym, but it seems like CrossFit, it's really like a fraternity. Yeah. And I think that's like the big, the draw to it that makes it almost call them feel like, like a cult feel because it is, it's community, right? Like yeah. a lot of the CrossFit gyms, like they have the workout of the day, but uh, like my gym, for example, um, or box, if you want to call it a box, uh, they have a workout of the day and they just do classes throughout the day to do that workout together. So um, it's not necessarily like an open gym time, but it's just that that sense of community. And it's just, yeah, it's super refreshing for sure. Like bodybuilding, it it is quite solo, I guess. But like you said, you have friends at the gym, but it's just a different feel and a different mm-hmm vibe to the whole like community aspect which i think really draws people in and keeps them there well i would imagine it really speaks to you as far as your competitive nature too to have (laughs) yeah that's another reason why i like it there's like an app where you can put in your lifts for whatever workout and you can see what everyone in the class did that day because they log their results so it's like okay where am i sitting like (laughs) where can i improve uh and then competing against yourself to see what lifts like what you're your one max rep and stuff is, which something I'm learning because I've never done training like that. So I'm like, never, I, don't, I have no idea what most of my one max rep lifts are. Right, right. Yeah. No, it's, uh, and you got some other exciting things that happened just last year, right? Got the first uh, new home. Yeah, yeah. First, first time home buyer purchase. last year yeah. in uh, BC. So that's, Taking a toll on the bank account for sure. Say, yeah, that's like buying ten homes here in Michigan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, and it's a condo. It's not a house. So, uh, especially like with inflation and the mortgage rates and everything, it's been a interesting experience. But I'm finally in the market, so I'm I'm happy about that. That's yeah, awesome. I have a buddy in California, and I used to piss him off because they were looking at homes, and you know they were looking at starter homes, fourteen hundred, sixteen hundred square feet, and he'd show show them to me, and then I'd see what the price was. And I'd look at a similarly priced home in Michigan and I'd send it to him. <laughs> and be like, well, if you want to move here, here's this house. The guest house isn't very big, but <laughs> the main the main residence is actually because it's 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 just outrageous out there. I know. I like look at places in Texas. Like I always thought if I was ever gonna move somewhere in the States, it would be Texas. Uh like mansions out there and like for less than the the condo that I just bought. I'm like, this oh, is yeah. just crazy. <laughs> like fifty dollars a square foot. And yeah, I'll see that, like seven thousand square foot mansions for under yeah. four hundred thousand. <laughs> yeah, that's insane to me. Just insane. But I mean, we do live in the most beautiful province, so I can't be too mad about it. There you go. Now, are you uh, are you the decorating type? I know you got quite a few different, uh, you know, styles and things you have to bring to the stage to compete. So is that is that <laughs> is it reflected in the home or how's that? Yeah, how's that yeah. Working? Slowly doing some home renos and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, it has taste. It has stuff. <laughs> there you go good stuff good stuff well any, anywhere else people can uh can find you out there like i know uh rk think fit is your instagram are there any other channels that you're on or uh where you, where you would like to put out content right now or uh yeah no mainly just my instagram i did have a facebook page that i had quite the following on and then it got hacked so that was a uh I want to say end of last year. So no more Facebook. <laughs> I'm just on Instagram. I'm uh, not on Twitter. Well, I have a Twitter account. I just haven't really used it in a long time. I'm sure it's still out there, but don't tweet me because I will not respond. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Well, one of the things um, we like to do when we're kind of going through uh, our interviews, we and this might be a, we might ex- do an extended version of this, but um, <laughs> we do a round called like shoot, move, communicate, where it's more, uh, you know, some of it's more rapid fire, quick questions. Uh, some of it sure. we can elaborate on. Um, but a couple of questions keep popping in my head that I, I, I figured I, could, I should probably transition to this set of questions because they're going to overlap there. So if you're ready to roll, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get rolling on some of that. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good deal. Uh, first one is uh, what accomplishments uh, in your competitive career has made you the most proud? Uh, that would have had to have been earning my pro card for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Good stuff. And uh, accomplishment outside of competing that has made you most proud. What would that be? Uh, outside of competing? Well, we kind of just touched on it. Just uh, buying my first home last year. Did that all on my own. So I was pretty, pretty stoked about that. Yeah. Would nice. have to be. That's the first thing that comes to mind. <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. Um, what, one word to describe Rachel as a competitor. What would that be? 
tenacious. <laughs> tenacious. One word to describe Rachel as a CrossFitter, what would that be? <laughs> Average. <laughs> All right, good deal. I like that. One word, one word to describe Rachel as a manager and or leader, what would that be? Direct. All right, good deal, yeah. good deal. So relational, but direct, right? So they're like, yes. you, you warm yeah. them up or they're like, oh, she's so nice. And it's like, you need to buy this product that's, now. <laughs> that, that's like a, a skill I've had to uh, tone down over the years. There I didn't go. really, I was just too direct. I was like, with, with everything, like in the professional side of things. Um, so it's definitely something I always try to, to always soften. Just, you just always just put your last name out there, right? Did you see my last yeah, name? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know it's the killer. <laughs> Good deal. All right. Uh, you know, one of the things we like to ask about too, is if, if you were to give like one word to encourage an upcoming female competitor, like physique and any of the physique sports athlete, you know, trying to work through it, I think you'd be a great resource. What would that be? What would be your advice to them? One word. We'll start with one word and I, I changed it on you. I asked advice because I do want to, I, I want to give you more than one word. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, I, can, I, I wrote the word. question gotta... so I can adjust them. I can adjust him when I'm being selfish. But I do One like word. You had that 10 years. All of these of, things. That 10 yeah. years of grinding to make it happen. So I, I, I changed uh, it as I was reading the question. I changed it. I changed it. What, what was the, the black hole tunnel thing you were talking about earlier? Quantum, <laughs> quantum, 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 quantum tunneling. No. <laughs> uh, if I had to pick one word, it would just be patience. Patience. Especially for women. Um, when you're not patient, that's when you hurt yourself. Some people go in too fast and they just want results. Well, men and women, they want results. They want it to happen overnight. They want to win this show and that show back to back. And they want to be there yesterday. So it's uh, yeah. Patience. I think say one word for sure. Good deal. And then just as kind of more of an open question, but you know, as you're coming through the industry as a successful, you know, female competitor, like, is there any, any advice you'd have out there for the starter local female competitors, maybe, things you felt you did that helped or maybe missteps or what, what, what would that look like specific to the female athletes? As we mentioned earlier, we have a lot of uh, male athletes we've had on, but I'd like to get the female perspective on the sport as well. Yeah. I mean, a big thing would be to make sure you pick the right coach and don't be afraid to switch and try, try different trainers or coaches. Uh, you want to make sure you know someone or you're using someone that like is knowledgeable on the female side of things like hormonally um, and isn't just bro science. Cause again, that's where you're going to definitely it, what I've or mistakes I've made over the years in my amateur um, days is working with people that didn't weren't science backed, I guess yep. they weren't. Uh, yeah. Not doing it uh, properly. <laughs> yeah. Bro science works decently for the bros, but <laughs> with the, with the gals, it works way. And really screw up the females, or it can, yeah. or yeah, yeah, they're just pushing certain supplements on you that uh, you don't want to be taking. That's yeah. a big thing yeah. too, for sure. Yeah. No, it's interesting. I worked in a medical management company, and even like just your your local, just one time showers, like just how messed up you know their hormones would be and and things of that nature. So it's that's a that's a great great point. You know, you can't can't use uh hey just use a uh, you know a quarter of what my boyfriend's using or whatever that's what he, he, he said like, the no, boyfriend has them on something the i'm like what yeah. like yeah even well, hearing what some like bikini competitors are doing i'm like oh man yeah. oh that's crazy that's like well, another topic <laughs> it's kind of a double-edged sword you touched on when you said patience and because like with the men it's slightly better in a weird way because most of the men got into this because they wanted to build a lot of muscle so it, uh, typically men don't like competing because that's a whole period of time where they're not building right. muscle where with the females it's usually a lot different they love competing because that's when they look in shape you know because women aren't doing this stuff in the off season like the men are you know the men are doing stuff year round so they love the off season they're big they're strong that's why they got into the sport the women they don't want to be out of shape they don't want to be soft or i mean you know they, they want to be lean that's why and so that it's I find that they seem to want to compete much more often when, and that's really where it's hard on your body, the comp, you know, competing. And so you get like this double hit and that you got, you know, someone helping them who doesn't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing for, for men. And they really don't know what they're doing for women. Then you combine that with like a, and, and a lot of times the women who get in the sport tend to be very, very highly motivated people. You know, you're talking like a, like a, a normal distribution in a bell curve, you know, for the men, you're already like, you know, not the average person you're, you're on, you know, on like the, 
kind of far end of someone who's motivated and driven, but even more so for the females, because, you know, being like hypermuscular is a real male kind of thing. And so for the females, you're talking way, at, you know, a couple standard deviations from the norm, like hyper motivated, hyper driven. And so you have, you have someone who's like willing to work harder than everyone. And I see that that seems to be like very consistent with the females that you never have to worry about their work ethic. And then you add boyfriend who doesn't know what he's doing hormonally. And then, you know, combined with that hyper motivated girl who wants to compete 10 times a year, it's, you know, it's, it's can you can get yourself in trouble. Yeah. And that thing with another thing with picking the right coach, especially as a newbie, it, setting realistic expectations or helping them through that process, especially post-show, like, yeah, you're not going to, it's going to be a little bit different, but also yeah. let's not jump off the deep end right away here. Like properly cycling out of the show, like yeah. food, cardio, everything. It's uh, so many people just have no idea and they just think they could just go back to eating like they were before. So yeah. that's, that's mm. a big thing too. <laughs> Well, a couple more questions for you. As I mentioned, this will be a little more uh, expanded version of these questions. So I'm sure people out there won't mind. But uh, all right, next one. This is a little fun, little fun one. Uh, if you had to miss one, what would it be? A meal, a night of sleep, or a training session? A meal, a night of sleep, or a training session? Uh, probably a meal. <laughs> or a night of sleep. Yeah. <laughs> one or the other. You could do it. You you can miss two. Look at that. You're yeah. an over. You're you're an overachiever. I've, I've seen her preps. She has missed several. <laughs> several meals and several nights of sleep. That yeah. sleep is uh, forever forever working on the sleep schedule. Yeah, good deal. All right. Next one is uh, if you had to tip pick one word that's a parallel between you as a competitor and as a businesswoman, what would that be? As a parallel between. That's a really good question. Um, motivated. <laughs> All right, good deal. That's good. Deal. Yeah, that's my big. Back to what I was bringing up earlier. That's my biggest pet peeve of the sport. Is you have people who are so hyper motivated, self motivated, do all this stuff on their own for real, no financial gain, and then never apply that to the rest of their Two life. Points. Yeah, it drives me crazy. Well, one of the things we talk about here at First Attachment, you know, one of our, our taglines we kind of stumbled on is uh, we say we're all in. And so the question we like to ask our guests too is, you know, what is something that you are currently or in the near future going to be all in on? What gets you excited, passionate, you know, ready to roll in the morning? I would say right now it's just uh, working on my fitness in between shows. Like it's not something that ever really goes away. I'm kind of always all in, like – Yes, I have your off season or improvement season, but it's uh, that it still excites me. I'm still, I still, it's in the back of my mind. I'm excited to get back on stage again, but I know it's their seasons. So right now it's kind of just need a little bit of a mental shift. And then when the time is ready, we'll be ready to pull the trigger and get back out there. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Good deal. Well, we appreciate you uh, joining us. I mean, for me, I think you covered all of my questions. Mr. Harris, any uh, any additional questions or commentary as we kind of wind down here? No, I think I, I no one's listening. I blew it with the quantum tunneling. I, I lost the <laughs> guess on my end with that. <laughs> Everyone shuts off when I start talking now. Oh, <laughs> uh, I doubt. Now, are you going to be at the Toronto Pro Show, Rachel, this year? Or, like work in a booth or anything? Um, or? I I'm sure we'll. Pro what that's in May. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think we'll probably have a booth. We're kind of just working out our event schedule for this year right now for the, the Canadian dates anyways. Um, definitely we'll be at the Vancouver Pro. That's in July. Uh, but I, I might be in Toronto for sure um, gotcha. for the Toronto Pro. Well, if so, uh, hopefully hopefully we can uh, we can link up with you there as well. I think. Uh, yeah, Justin definitely. Has, Are you Justin guys doing a booth? Well, we haven't determined specifically yet, but I know Justin has a few clients, so we're always, yeah. you know, oh, cool, line, cool. we're trying, we try to line up a combination of like shows or events as well as, uh, uh, we're, you know, we're Justin has clients and things and that way we can kind of support both and yeah, you know, absolutely. see how it goes. So yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> all right. Well, it was a pleasure having you on, getting to know you a little bit. And for all of our YouTubers out there, uh, just a reminder to like, subscribe, put your comments in. If you have any other specific questions for Rachel, like all of our guests, I'm sure she'd be happy to answer them for you. Go ahead and put those in the Absolutely. comment section. We'll, uh, we'll reach out to her and get those answers. And uh, for the rest of you, uh, have a good night. We'll see you.
Awesome. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks, Rachel.